So, Malas, this case has been argued at different levels. Yes. And Malas, I was somewhat pained when one council argued that we respect the sentiments of the people of Jammu and Kashmir. But you must also respect our sentiments. Now, Malas, I, I, I think that we cannot reduce this case to an emotive majoritarian interpretation of the Constitution of India. Malas, all residents in Jammu and Kashmir are citizens of India. They are as much a part of India as anybody else. If historically there is an article of the Constitution that gives them certain rights, Malas, they are entitled to defend that as a matter of law. Yes. That those rights may be taken away, may not be taken away constitutionally or without reference to the Constitution is another matter. But to say that you must respect our sentiments as if they are somebody else itself is creating a kind of chasm that shouldn't be created, especially in court. That's number one. Number two, Malats, and I adopt Mr. Salve's argument that we are concerned with the interpretation of 370. Read the text, understand the context, and interpret 370. I entirely agree with that. And that's exactly what I'm going to do before your lordships. Number three, Malats, If you look at the history of India in that, in that context, Malas, you will find that Jammu and Kashmir had no links with the rest of India, geographically. No links. No part of the territory of Jammu and Kashmir was linked to the rest of India. And the two principles on the basis of which accession had to take place was contiguity, you have to be contiguous. That's how Malas, states like Junagar, Hyderabad, many other states which are internally, which were within India, could never accede to Pakistan because that principle could not be established. So you have to have integrity, contiguity, and you have to have population. These were the two principles. And the decision, the third, was to be taken by the ruler. These were the three principles on the basis of which accession took place. Factually, Malas, Jammu Kashmir was not contiguous to India. How do you say that? Because Malas, it is Radcliffe, when he came and he made the award, he gave Gurdaspur to India. That's how we got contiguity. That's part of the Ratcliffe Award. Of course, Ratcliffe, when he came, knew nothing about India. So you might appreciate, Millers, what were the forces behind it. And Firozpur was a district connected to Gudaspur, which had a Muslim majority population. Firozpur was also given to India. That established contiguity. That one historical fact, Mullahs, your lordships may know. And it's part of the records, Mullahs, of the case. The second grave issue that was confronting India at that point in time was greater Punjab was Muslim dominated, not the bifurcated Punjab. The majority population was Muslim. If you gave greater Punjab or what was Punjab at that time to Pakistan, their boundary would reach Delhi. Nobody could afford that. 
and if india got all of punjab our boundary would reach lahore neither pakistan would accept it nor india would accept it these are historical this is a historical background in the context of which the fate of jammu and kashmir was to be decided note another fact jammu and kashmir had a constitution a detailed constitution of 1939 which had an administrative structure like any other democratic structure except that the praja sabha was dominated by dogras in fact all the nominees in the praja sabha were dogras Sheikh Abdullah, who was who had an egalitarian outlook, was dead against the ruler, and therefore was imprisoned. There was a popular movement in Kashmir against Hari Singh. Sheikh Abdullah and Pandit Nehru. were of the same bent of mind because pandit nehru also showed utter distaste for the concept of rulership in fact it was sardar patel who said we must honor our constitution nehru said no we shouldn't we shouldn't give anything no privy purses to the ruler that's all a part of record record of history that's why when the invaders came into jammu and kashmir nehru said release sheikh abdullah first and he became the interim prime minister he then was made a member of the constituent assembly of india to negotiate the terms of the details of the accession and remember the constitution of jammu and kashmir like no other princely state in india no other i say was drafted after 1950 and came into force marriage in 1956 57 It was completed in '56. Came into force in 1957. Only, only state, only princely state. That's one set of historical facts that your lordships must, must keep in mind. 